Hey, what's going on, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And uh, yeah, this this morning we're going to be talking about how paid ads help this gentleman grow his uh, business extremely fast. Listen, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, as you're on this live, if people are messaging you, friend requesting you, you know, they are eventually going to try to pitch you some sort of something most likely. Um, be be careful of that as you're watching, you know, as you as you come into our community or any other community online on Facebook, be careful of those people who are going to be looking to prey on naive people uh, and, and pitch their wares and so forth. Um, for the most part, um, ignore most people <laughs> who are who are reaching out to you because they're looking to sell you something and you need to be focused in your business. Um, you know, buying the right training from the right people, use your gut and, um, then getting into action. And that's exactly what Edison did. So help me welcome Edison to the show. What's up, my man? How's it going there, Dave? How's it going? It's going excellent. My brother, where are you calling in from? I am in upstate New York, about 50 miles off of New York city. Okay. Okay. I had family that, that uh, is from New York and I used to go up there every summer, New York state, not New York city. Um, but, um, welcome man. And tell us like a little bit about who Edison is. So everybody can get to know. I see you have pictures back there. You must have family. You must be, you must have a whole life. Right. And that's, I think what sometimes we forget when we're dealing with people on the internet and we're talking to them and we're marketing to them is that, we all have families. We're all regular people. And that's why I love to talk to people each morning because they, you know, they humanize this whole this whole business for us. So tell us a little bit about Edison, you know, who you are and, and how you found Legendary. Well, uh, Dave, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on here today because uh, it's my privilege to be here. Uh, I've actually been here since in inception, but I've been uh, in the digital marketing realm since 1997, before it was even called digital marketing. Back in the day when people didn't even know that the internet was going to be a thing. <laughs> you know, it was a fad. Yeah. Uh, so... So, but you're absolutely right. Everything's about family. The, all these pictures here are, are uh, special events we've had over the years. I hang them up on the wall there to remind me of what it is, why I'm doing everything that I'm doing. Uh, mm -hmm. I have the bar back there, by the way, mini bar. And that's so that, you know, sometimes I want to forget some of the things that happened as well. So <laughs> sometimes I want to remember these people. Sometimes I want to forget them. You know, I have both tools. <laughs> that, that's there the tagline go, of life, right? Uh, but no, uh, I've been doing this since 1997. Uh, we had a, uh, a small firm, advertising firm. Uh, my uh, then wife at the time, we grew it uh, over 20, 25 years or so. And uh, my kids are grown now. You know, one uh, they're both out doing uh, their own thing. My uh, daughter is working. She's a vet tech. I'm very proud of her. My son is an entrepreneur extremely proud of him he's doing a lot of things that that i didn't even imagine could be done and he's uh, actually doing it uh so it's all about getting your family through uh and giving them as much as you can and then teaching them exactly what it is that they need to aspire to so that they can do it themselves as well so with the digital marketing experience that you have and all the different um things that you know and and, and that you can do what led you to legendary? What what were you looking for and, and have you found it? Yes. Here's the thing. Okay. Uh, you know, the shiny object, object syndrome, you go around and you do all these different things. Uh, my main focus over the last 25 years or so since uh, before 97, but let's say 97 uh, for, for the web. My main focus was uh, helping small business owners, right? Uh, small business owners, retail locations, they need the internet more than anyone else. And they're the ones that like fight it the most, right? Uh, so I found my niche with the small business owner. Uh, however, uh, as you know, uh, any service oriented business, you're trading your time for money. So yes, I could scale up by hiring more uh, staff, you know, the more work we get in, the more staff I need and, you know, scale up that way. What attracted me to Legendary uh, and pretty much any affiliate program out there is you can actually promote something. 
and you can promote as, uh, as hard as you want or as easy as you want. Uh, and, and what I mean by easy is just put up a link somewhere, throw traffic to it every so often and forget that it's there. And every once in a while, you get a check. I mean, like, you know, I mean, I don't get a physical check, of course, but, you know, you get your PayPal saying, hey, you got a whole bunch of uh, money here. Over the years, I've learned to do that with programs that supplement anything that I do. Mm. So my focus is my business. And that's where I, you know, uh, that's my my bread and butter. Right. That's what pays my bills. That's what pays the mortgage. That's what pays everything. Right. The affiliate part, in my case is the i used to call it monopoly money <laughs> because it's like the extra stuff that you get you want to go on vacation and and you know you say hey let me see what i can uh, uh promote out there throw a couple of dollars in here you know because i do it a lot a lot of paid ads throw a couple of dollars here let's see if i could ha- get a three to five return on investment and whatever we make for that amount we'll go on vacation with we used to actually do that with, with my daughter we used to go off to a uh, spring break and I used to say, okay, whatever I sell this weekend, that's the money we're going to use to to go out and, and, and to wherever we're going, right? And sometimes you, you used to be like just 500 bucks. And sometimes you'll be like, you know, not much but money. I wanna, but I, I want to sh- I, I share something that you, you shared with, um, that you wrote in to us when we, we asked you to come uh, be on the show. You said... Um, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but I, I, I think it's important because a lot of people, whether you need extra play money or, or in your case, um, when you, you know, are, are you okay with me sharing about the divorce and what you did for your ex-wife and yeah. Yeah. So, so you wrote in that, you know, in 2007, you were divorced and gave the the company that you were just talking about and its residual income to your ex-wife and you started from scratch um, and, and everything was fine until the pandemic shut down 75% of your new clients. And, and, and you, you wrote in, if it wasn't that you dabbling in affiliate sales over the years, the pandemic would have wiped you out. And so you said the commissions I had built up from companies offering email marketing services, hosting domain registrations, online education, helped me get through a very difficult time in the world. Now I'm restarting uh, and business is starting to look great. And I just, I just, man, I thought that was really powerful because absolutely, um, if you want extra monopoly money, as you said, or vacation money, but it's also, we never know when something's going to hit, when something, and we don't know what it's going to look like. And this last thing that we all went through was completely out of the blue And Edison, because of your previous affiliate marketing experience and the income streams that you have, that carried you through. And there were so many people that didn't have that. And I just wonder before we move on, if you'd speak to, yeah, you talked about the vacations and all that. But if you would speak to how important it is to have backup skills, savings, and even income coming in because you don't, like you said, you didn't predict what happened, right? You, you, no one you, did. you <laughs> can you talk about that side of this business and yeah. how it saved yeah. your, your ASS? It saved my ASS yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, thanks uh, for uh, bringing that up because I was going to segue into that because it's great to have monopoly money, but when you need it, uh, back in 2017, uh, you, you said 2007, but it's 2017. Uh, 2017, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. we built. My, my ex-wife and I built a beautiful business. We, we had, we did very well. We put the kids through college, the whole nine yards. Uh, but in 2017, we divorced. And w- one of the things that I did was I gave her all the residual income, the, all the hosting accounts, the uh, websites, anything that had to do with maintenance, anything like that. That's the residual income. That's what I had been, uh, that's what I strived to build over time. Uh, I was in a good place to do that. So, you know, I, handed it off to her so she didn't have to worry about paying the mortgage or, or taking care of the bills and all these different things. But then uh, because I felt that it was easier for me to start all over. But in reality, I was already making money online with the affiliate programs. The affiliate, uh, uh, I, don't, I know we can't really talk about uh, numbers here, but 
it was enough that and with a proper disclaimer oh, which okay. is which, well, which is you, edison is about to give some numbers in no way shape or form should any of you take these numbers as that, that that's exactly what we're promising that you're going to make in this business but please give us numbers exactly. now that we've given that disclaimer All right so from affiliate uh, money at that time i was only making about thirty thousand dollars a year which you know some people make that part-time working somewhere uh some people make that full-time uh let's be uh you know serious but that allowed me to have a a, a a a cushion let's say so i can give away the entire company and still not be <laughs> flat broke and really start from scratch so i started a new company from scratch which was the marketing uh side of things because i i wasn't going to start competing against my own ex-wife at the time so uh I started the marketing side of it. Things were going fantastically well until 2019 when the pandemic hit and everything just came to a screeching halt because my niche is the small business owner and the small business owner is the one that suffered the most in this pandemic. Uh, I mean, a lot of businesses suffered, but they really, really, really suffered. So about 75% of my income just went away. Again, the affiliate uh, uh, funds that I was getting was enough to carry me through all that, so I didn't have to hit. Uh, I didn't have to go into all of my savings, because had I gone into all of my savings, I would have been completely uh, depleted if I didn't have a, some type of income. And you know, I still had a few clients, you know, that they were, you know, that that survived and were still paying, uh, you know, some bills, but. Affiliate, uh, if you don't have a, uh, people call it a plan B and they call it whatever they want. I call it supplemental income. Whatever you're focusing on, you, you have to do something to bring more money in. You have to, uh, whether you're going to use it just to go, you have to have something that supplements what you currently do. Because let's say you're working somewhere nine to five. And you're let go. I mean, nowadays they're hiring everybody if, left and right. There's, you know, I uh, agree. But, I, I agree that if you have a nine to five, you know, you should have, you should, you should be, you should always be. Well, I, I hate to say the word should, but um, yeah, supplemental income is a is an extra income. Side income can be helpful if you have a job. But what if you're a business owner like you are now? Edison as a say you have an affiliate marketing business and you strive to do this full time. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to people how they start multiple things and how having multiple things as an entrepreneur is very different than having multiple things if you still have a job? Like if you still have a job and you have a side hustle or you're doing something that's 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 very different. But if you have multiple businesses, um, meaning that you're you're trying to you know run an agency and do affiliate marketing, you're trying to, unless it's a business model that that, that goes really close, that works really well together, like the core four ways to sell information, you can sell a course and also do affiliate marketing. And it's not a, right. a a big deal. But I just want to make sure that 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 I want to just delve into the details of what you said a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of new people who think, well, absolutely. Edison, who's been in the business for 25 years, says I need to have lots of things going on. So as they're trying to start their affiliate marketing business, they're being marketed to a bunch of other things. And before they actually have anything up and running, they don't even have the business started yet. They're in the mindset of multiple streams of income. Right. But they ain't got the first stream streaming, if that makes sense. Can you yes, speak sir. to that? Yeah, absolutely. And just uh, to clarify everything, one of the things that helps any individual is, first of all, let's differentiate two things. If you're working nine to five and you have that job, right? Once five o'clock comes around, you could shut it off, right? <laughs> right. And I mean, you know, you typically can. When you're an entrepreneur, Dave, come on, can we really turn this off? <laughs> we're constantly, true, we're constantly thinking about it, whether we're uh, whether we're working on it or not. We're constantly thinking of our business. All right. So first, that's the big differentiator. So when you're an entrepreneur, you're doing many, many things. So when you start doing the multiple streams of income, here was my secret. This this is what helped me, and I'm sure it can help many people. 
I always chose an affiliate program that's going to supplement anything that I was doing. Okay, so for instance, I offered uh, domain registration, hosting, uh, web design, right? So what goes with all that? You need to do SEO. You need to do PPC. Those are all services, right? But which affiliate programs go there? Email marketing systems, right? So I became an affiliate for an email marketing service, right? Uh, 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 hosting outside of uh, I don't have my own servers to, to put a company on and let them do it. So I you go to a company. I became a reseller for their servers. And then now there, and there it is, an affiliate program. Yeah. Online education like this, legendary marketing. One of the biggest things I loved about legendary. It's how, it's how I became the number one affiliate of ClickFunnels is because we sell education about yes. how to build internet marketing. And for the past six or seven years, how many ever years we've been in business, right. I have been sell sending customers over to ClickFunnels to get mm -hmm. a funnel set up. And so that has made me, and again, another big, fat, ridiculous disclaimer that this is absolutely not guaranteed for anyone. Um, but I think my affiliate income with uh, ClickFunnels is, is, is somewhere between, um, you know, 30 and 40,000 a month, something like that, maybe up right. to 50,000 a month. I, I can't remember, but it's, it's, it's literally a, a, a side income as you're talking that that I was able to earn without doing any extra work because it is a what's the word Edison it is a it's like a it's something that they already need in this business you know exactly. what I mean it's like it's if you're gonna go what, yeah if it's I was a golf whatever trainer, you're if I was a golf coach. Mm -hmm. What would I want? I, if, if I had clients coming to me 10 a day, 10 a day, okay, or five a day, I got five clients coming to me a day. If I send somebody into the, the pro shop after a lesson and they spend $1,000 on golf equipment, do you think that the, the, the trainer out there should get a commission for sending them in and telling them everything that they need to buy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now that probably doesn't happen, but the beauty <laughs> of affiliate marketing is, is that you get paid for everything you do and then you keep getting paid uh, over and over again. It's all about getting paid per action and then getting paid. Basically, the, the, the beauty of affiliate marketing is you're literally splitting the, the, your profit partner with the company. You're getting 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of a sale, which in in many cases is mo more than an owner, that more than the owner of the business is a lot more. So Edison, I, I I'm I'm so thankful that you brought this up. That affiliate marketing doesn't just have to be a primary business; it can be something that you're using to sell your customer additional picks and shovels as mm -hmm. they continue on their journey to, to mine gold in their industry, right? Absolutely. And this is something that I've been teaching small business owners, especially the ones with the retail locations. They don't realize they have a retail location. They have foot traffic coming in every single day and they have stuff that they don't sell, but they can become an affiliate for and just yeah. have a sign there with a QR code that goes somewhere. <laughs> and if the person buys it, that's supplemental income that is not costing them anything extra. So and it's your like email, your email autoresponder series, the emails that you send that go out mm -hmm. to somebody, you can write as many of those as you want. That's what sometimes I don't think we 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 remember is that you know you can write 10 follow-up emails, you can write six or you can write 600 and you can continue to find products that that you know it a lot of times it's the marketer's responsibility to figure out an angle of how that product might tie in or sometimes you have to point out why the person might need the product but but because sometimes we don't know we need something until somebody tells us we need something right, that's right. how the marketplace is it works hello <laughs> yeah. uh uh but you know, Edison, as soon as somebody gets on my email list, maybe I might sell them or market them my core offer initially, whether it's my services, maybe it's a course, maybe it's my main affiliate offer. But 
they're still on my email list mm -hmm. and I can continue to market to them over and over and over again right. while delivering value in my emails and in just making subtle recommendations for them to go grab other products. And it's truly do the work once and the email. And that's the closest thing or one of the closest things that you come to true automation. It's true passive income because you did the work. Say, for example, you, you, you paid the money and set up the paid ads, which I'd like to transition and talk about a little bit with you. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of, of the, how you really make your money with paid ads is not, or nowadays anyways, is not on the initial sale. The, the, all the big companies know this and all the companies that you see advertising understand this. We, we understand this as well. We're willing, if we're selling a $7 challenge, to spend 40 50 60 upwards of sometimes $100 for a sale. For a $7 product, what in the hell's wrong with your math, Dave? Mm -hmm. Because we know what each customer is ultimately worth over you know, a year, lifetime value. Right. And those, ad those additional emails and, and stuff like that, that that go out add to that lifetime value. So talk to us a little bit about that from your perspective and how you've used paid ads um, here with you know, lately to, to, to drive sales? Uh, well, I use a lot of paid ad uh, for my clients and I'll give you a few examples. I, ha I have an attorney that uh, we do content marketing for him because he needs to be as, in as many places as possible. And it's extremely expensive for attorneys to get high ranking on, a, on, on, on Google, let's say, right? So we are doing interviews on a weekly basis, posting the, the, the uh, let's say the videos up to YouTube and posting it to his website. But then we do pay that. So we send traffic, targeted traffic to those videos. So now he gets all these views and the people that are watching these videos then see that he, they need their, his services and they go to their website. We capture their email. We post in the follow-up uh, auto you know, uh, sequence. Uh, here, you're going to love this video because it talks about this. You're going to like that because, and then we just don't say you're going to love this. It's going to say, if you know someone who's in this situation, pass, just forward this email to them. So pay that and email marketing, they go hand in hand, like you mentioned. You have to not just throw money at, uh, uh, throw mon money at ads to go to a landing page and a funnel and that's it. You have to also capture that information so that you can do all the sequential email marketing for i have i have a client that we send out an email uh, every three days for a full year and in there we can change the ps that's what we sell the the, the product on the ps because it's all uh, valuable information and the ps yeah. is what gets them all the affiliate sales and he has yeah. it, it grows his, his firm it grows his audience and get some uh, more business, his core business, but then he's selling uh, uh, affiliate products on the back end. And again, really, an attorney, an attorney is using, oh. is selling products as an affiliate to his customer base or his, his, his audience. That's the, and you've set well, that all up. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The attorney right now is doing content marketing, right? The attorney, is, yeah. we're doing all of this with, with throwing money at the videos, at the YouTube videos. When it goes on to the YouTube videos, uh, to their website, and we capture their email address, for instance, uh, they that particular uh, client is not doing affiliate marketing right now. We are growing a base, and one of the things we're going to do is we're going to get together with other attorneys that are not of the same discipline, that then they can do, a, they're going to have a network of referrals that right. they go back and forth and refer all these different things. It's pretty much an affiliate market, uh, marketing uh, per se. It's not like you yeah. know you're gonna go and sign up. More and referral, like, oh. more more referral marketing, but it's the same thing. It's the, the same referral thing. Marketing exactly. and affiliate marketing is you're sending somebody to a business and you get paid for the the exactly. the referral. Exactly. So back in the day, we used to call it referral marketing. Now they call it affiliate marketing. You know, so there you go. There you <laughs> it's go. like digital marketing used to be online, more you know, internet marketing. So. It's potato, potato type thing. 
Uh, but getting back to to paid ads, paid ads is the fastest way you can know if something's going to work or not. OK, if you want to know that, uh, you know, that that uh, legendary, for instance, is uh, like with legendary, I've thrown uh, money at uh, uh, email, uh, paid ads and everything else. And then I let it ride. Right. Because what happens is a lot of people throw a couple of hundred dollars, a couple of thousand dollars at an ad and say, oh, my God, this didn't work. But they got uh, a whole bunch of names, right? <laughs> they got yep. maybe one or two sales, but because they didn't make enough to at least match what they spent, they think it didn't work. But they don't do the back end. Like you said before, yep. they don't do the sequential automa- uh, you know, automated response, uh, the emails that go out to then continue to add value to that person so that they can see you as an authority and they can see you as someone who can help them. Because that's what we're doing. We're helping people. Your educational products uh, uh, are people that are looking to start an online service, uh, an online digital service to offer their own business, right? Their own core products. It's not just to sell legendary. It's to learn how to use the internet, to use this great uh, device that now we can sit on our laptops and just do it all day long. I wouldn't take it to a beach, though. I wouldn't take my laptop to a beach. I get sand in there. I tried it. It doesn't work for me anyways, but I could t- I take it anywhere else, okay? I go on vacation. I visit my daughter in Tampa, and she's right by your office. So I'm going to visit you one day, by the way. And we go. I take my laptop, and I don't have to worry about work. All of my clients are 100% online right now. All of my clients were before... Pre-pandemic, I would go to my client's uh, office and uh, this and that. But post-pandemic, it's all Zoom. It's all this, what we're doing right now. Well, and and the, you don't, I mean, this, and brother. The phone. Absolutely, you, you, and the phone. I mean, most of, most of, if you set, for example, even if you're doing paid ads, but you set your funnel up, you set, a, a you know, even a, a minimum of, of five to 10 emails that go out just to get you started, whatever you can always write. I'm going to show you something here in a second. It's going to blow you all's mind in terms of, I'm going to show you an affiliate marketing campaign that is going to blow your mind and, um, and, and, and show an example of exactly what we're talking about with these email follow-ups over months and even years. Um, you know, but gosh, this is this is really this is really important um, because there is there's just there's so much there's so th- th- this whole business is just all a really simple 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 model that it it it, it there's only a couple of tools that you need to use meaning a, a funnel builder and an email autoresponder. Those are the only two tools that I have used and that, that one needs to be successful with internet marketing. You don't need a WordPress blog. You don't need anything. Everything else you can use. You don't have to own it. You can just use it. You can rent it, right? You can rent the real estate in most cases for free to set up your business, which is insane to me. We can just go and set up a storefront on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram for free. That's the free side of the business. So every, so no longer does anybody, and Pinterest, sorry, Carolina, uh, and Pinterest and you know several others, right? Or if we have an email list, we could just email our email list. But I digress, I digress. Edison, we can set up shop in any one of these these malls, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, for free. And if then we want to spend money to turbocharge, we can with paid ads. And I am just like I'm having a moment right here where I'm just realizing how good this is. And every single morning, I love to get excited and resell myself on how good this is and how much opportunity we have in front of us. So I make sure that I keep going after it every day and don't get complacent. Um, I promised I would show that campaign, but I, I just want to shoot it over to you if you have any thoughts on on this. So we're talking about paid ads. We're talking about making those work. 
but we have to remember that any of us can set up shop in any mall, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and have a free storefront. We can grow as big as we want. And, and, and that's even before we get into paid ads. Edison, how different is this than when we were marketing back 10 years ago? And especially how much easier is it before we even get into the paid ads conversation, just with what we can all do for low to no cost? Oh my God. I can tell you as someone who's been around for a while, uh, back in the day, <laughs> uh, we used to have, let's say we did direct marketing, right? We used to have to create the postcard, right? Then, uh, if it was just a simple postcard, design it, get it printed, mail it out, wait to get a response. Hopefully <laughs> they, right? they, they would have to mail a check back, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and then you would mail whatever information, books, tapes, whatever. Yes. Think about that, how different that was, folks. Oh, my God. It, it, right now, I'm spoiled. I'm like, oh, these kids don't know how good they have it, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you feel yeah. like the cro the crotchety old man who's like, yes. back in my day, we had to walk <laughs> two miles both ways uphill. You kids got it good. Stop exactly. complaining. You know, exactly. get off my grass while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show that campaign, Edison. I want to I want to show a visual of what what we're talking about here with these email follow ups. You know, I show this in the blueprints, but I'm going to give you all a little bit of a taste of what's in the blueprints if you don't own them yet, and also if you do own them, I'm going to show you something that that you may not have seen. It's in the fishing formula section where we talk about follow up. What else can I sell them for more money? Okay. And this particular uh, marketer who we found is, is, is just an affiliate marketer. I thought this was such a great example because he's not affiliated with us. Uh, he may have been a student at one time. Who knows? That would be cool. Um, uh, maybe I learned from him. I don't know or her, but either way, this was a, this is an example that I give in the blueprints and it's about a, um, you know, somebody who sells uh, woodworking uh, plans. And as of right now, um, I've been on this email list. Um, let's see, older than a year. So I've been on it for more than a year. Um, I, I've likely been on this for, for a cup, two to three years. Okay. Um, but either way, as you can see right here, okay. Um, oh, wait, let me go back to, to Bucks. So just this morning at 7.17 a.m., and let me make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. I, I still got an email, even though I subscribe to this email list, literally like two to three, maybe, I don't know, maybe even four years ago. But anyway, every single day, and you can look down, look, 26, May 20. May, uh, let me get out of, out of the way. So let me, so May 24th, May 23rd, May 22nd, May 21st, two on May 20th, May 19th, May. Uh, this is how you run a business. This is how you run a business right here. Every single day, an email goes out. And, um, originally the offer for this particular, uh, marketer who is running paid ads, and that's how I got on their email list. Um, originally they were selling, um, you know, woodworking plans to build sheds and things like that. And what they found is, you know, additional things that might relate or be of interest because we, you know, you know, to people who are also interested in building and making stuff and piddling in their garages and, and et cetera. But look at this, all of the medicinal plants of North America, right? the most powerful remedies growing in your area. So what, what this marketer is assuming that, Hey, maybe because this person likes to do their own piddling, they're a DIYer. Maybe they'll want to make their own home remedies for things, right? For growing food or growing, you know, medicine in their yard or whatever. Um, you know, it's like a 3d printer. What is he, what is he promoting here? Um, Make sure you are connected to Wi-Fi and click the link below. So you can always click through. Oh, it's like a 3D printer for wood. DIY invention turns a regular piece of wood into a coveted work of art. See, this guy's gone out and found other, and he's found them on ClickBank there. That that This offer looks like it's from ClickBank. But 
um, he's found another offer that he thinks or she thinks would be relevant to the people on this email list. And again, Edison, this I've been on this list for now multiple years. And here is an example of somebody who runs their business like a business, takes this really seriously, markets and sends an email every day, even after multiple years. And um, I just can't imagine what this person's lifetime value is. Uh, it's got to be really high because they're doing follow up um, in a way that we all should be doing follow up. Oh, absolutely. On a daily basis and to send out totally different things. And I'm pretty sure if you go through those emails, you may find somewhere in there uh, him asking for feedback as to what else interests you, what else, uh, you know, what what troubles or struggles or challenges you may be having, because that's how you get more ideas of what else to sell people. If, yeah. if, if they need sure, if they sure. really need something, you go out there and find it and they'll they'll get it and you'll uh, you'll make some money out of it. Yeah, no, it's very it's very simple. So give us the the or it's not it's not simple, but it's 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 um, it is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. So let's talk a little bit about the paid ads thing. So are 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 you mostly doing your paid ads and comfortable on Google on Facebook? Let's 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 jump back over there because that's is what we titled the 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 uh, the the show here today. And let's um, let's just talk just a little bit about kind of getting a campaign set up and running and how would somebody get started if they wanted to test 20, 50, a hundred dollars in paid ads in, in your eyes. All right. The very first thing you have to know is you have to know uh, first where your, your target market lives, right? We know that Facebook and Instagram, if you advertise on one, you're going to advertise on the other. So if they're mostly there and that's the right audience for you, you go there. Uh, I stick to uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, uh, Google, okay? Because Google has YouTube. They have 10 different ways you can advertise on it. I have a client who paid ads that he's a septic guy, a septic tank uh, uh, person. And Google has this program that uh, you only advertise on a cell phone uh, uh, on one of these devices, right? If the ad shows up here, they click on it and it goes directly to their phone. And someone on the other end, of course, has to answer it. And he's paying about maybe $20 a person that when they click on it and they get a call. But for yeah. every $20 uh, a person, and you probably get 10 of them, you probably go through $200 to, to get $200 back in services. But the lifetime value there is $16,000 if they have a major issue when they go to know what it is uh your budget should go according to how what it is that you're selling first of all uh it's a simple if you want to do the simplest thing uh, on facebook you just boost an ad right but when you boost the ad your ad itself, you mean you boost a, a boost a regular post like yeah, from a, from your yes. from your fan page yes that's the easiest yeah. thing to do however uh, it's gotten a little pricey when you start, uh, when you start, uh, selecting demographics, you know, male, female and everything else, it gets a little bit pricier. However, if your message, you should still target, but if your message will only be read by the person who's interested on that particular thing, that's what you need to do. You need to address your target market. First, understand your, your avatar and understand who it is that you're targeting to, what ails them, what are their challenges and everything else, what are the pros and cons of your product, mostly speak about the benefits, right? Not the actual uh, uh, you know, details of it or the features. But if you want to start off with a $5 a day budget by just boosting an ad, uh, uh, a post, start off with that. But have something actionable right. in there. <laughs> You know what I mean? A lot of people yeah. uh, do something that doesn't have an actionable thing. They just want to get engagement and they want engagement because they want to show people that they have a lot of people following them, liking them and all these different things. I do a lot of paid ads. If you go to any of my social sites, my personal ones, you'll see a couple of posts here and there because I'm always working on paid ads. I could reach a million people with the right budget with a paid ad and I don't have to put it organically. Naturally, if you don't have the budget, Start off organically, start off with five bucks, 20 bucks a day, whatever it is. But you have to look at your numbers. 
The next thing is instead of boosting, and we're still on Facebook here. If instead of yeah. boosting, go into their 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 uh, business area where you can create all of their ads. You know, business uh, Facebook .com. That's where you start uh, uh, developing all of your ads there, and that platform is always changing. So my thing is I show all these vi videos and I show people how to do things and then Facebook goes and changes something and they're like, I'm looking for that button. It's not there anymore. Right. Because they changed it. So yeah. become familiar with not just the platform, but most importantly, the message you're trying to portray because that's what's in most important. Test different ads, see how people buy it. Go and see, look at, go to your competitors Go and look to see which ads they're running because you just go to the Facebook library and you can find out all the ads that any of your competitors are running. See what's working best because it'll actually tell you these things and see, yeah. it, don't copy it outright. Don't do that because that's trademark infringement, copyright infringement, a lot of things you could get in trouble for. That's what I did when I first started running paid ads back 12 years ago. I would actually use company logos and all kinds of trademark infringements. Then I started Jeez. getting a bunch of cease and desist letters from companies. And, <laughs> you don't but want you know what? I shot first. I shot my shot. That's the important lesson from yeah. that story. I that's shot true. my shot. Yes. And... And I got those ads up and I got sales and I got leads and it got me motivated. And then I got in a little bit of shit because I got some cease and desist. And I was like, oh, shit, that must be the boundary. And then I came back over here and I kept going. You know what I mean? So I also yeah, you know what the beauty in. is here. You uh, know what the beauty is? Uh, you're educating people on these things now. So they don't make the same mistake you and I made. Because, man, I got in trouble a couple of times myself because uh, you and I, we go out there, we get things done. We don't wait around to, uh, until it's perfect. You know, you <laughs> shoot and then you see Not as happens. an entrepreneur, you got you to gotta go. Um, I, I want to point out just real quick, you know, in our business blueprints, I have a an actual multiple post examples um, that I give of – the easiest way exactly what you're talking about right here um, if we go into the affiliate marketing business blueprint and we go down here to the facebook funnel we go to the facebook frenzy campaign the these campaigns a lot of the stuff that the details the specifics are back here in this education and for those of you who are looking i even give an example i even link to the post here i link to the post i give an example of the post and i link to the post here you can see that i link to it right here on facebook okay um but it, it it's 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 a post that you know that 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 does exactly what you are um are you that you're describing here as well as um uh, examples of where I've ran these exact campaigns. Um, I give you the templates. I give you the ad copy to the Facebook post. Um, again, I link directly to the actual Facebook post so you can see it. Um, and, and then, of course, I give screenshots and stuff as well. But you, you can see um, that there's a, there's a there's a simple way depending on what you're doing to do facebook ads if you're just getting started and i love that you brought up the boosting the post thing because on facebook right now if you've got a small budget and you want to get good quality leads because you have more time than money to spend on your business right now then absolutely you can boost a post tell them to comment below for more information and you take your five, your 10 bucks. And now all of a sudden you've got all this engagement. Your post blows up. You create a frenzy. I give you all the copy I give and you and, and you can, you know, you can put it to, to action in, in different niches if you want. It's, it's, it is interchangeable, but, um, but I, I just want to remind everybody that that those examples and that training is right there in the blueprints. And if if you're serious about it, um, then and the beauty is, is that most of what we teach in the blueprints is free. It's organic. But there's a couple of different places that we teach running paid ads. And I just love that you brought up the, the simplest kind, which is also 
the examples that I that I have back in there in the blueprints, which is just boosting a post and and not even really we do teach the business manager on decade in a day, and we do teach how to run paid ads, folks, in the business blueprints as a customer. Um, but you know, a lot of times we prefer that people start out organically and then begin to you know, what begin to uh, sort of use paid ads as a way to kind of boost or a way to throw gasoline on the fire. Um, if you're a seasoned vet like Edison and you've gone back and you know how to navigate the different ad platforms, fine, go do it. But it can be a huge disservice if if you're like, oh, now I need to go learn everything Edison knows that he's learned in his 25 year digital marketing career and and think that I'm just going that I'm not going to get frustrated. So where wh what other ad platform have you found to be the simplest to get started with? You mentioned the boosting a Facebook post. Do do you want to say more about that or mention mention another one that would be really that you think is simple or or the simplest to get started with? Well, Google believe it or not has made it uh, Google Ads. They've made it like when you first sign up and they're, I don't know if they're still doing this right now, but they're giving you like a $500 credit after you spend $500. But they've made it so that simple. They have the easy, uh, there's a little button, they say advanced or simple. And in the simplest way possible, all you do is answer their questions and you just follow along and you can have either a banner uh, advertising, a search ad, uh, a phone to uh, a, a phone ad. Uh, you could have a video ad. That's probably the, it, the least expensive thing you could do right now is video <laughs> and video ads. And you could do it through Google ads. You don't have to go to YouTube. You could go to YouTube ads as well. But I like keeping everything through Google uh, and I advertise on, on YouTube. But they walk you through very simply. I go into the more advanced because I know all that stuff. But if you're just starting off, start off with a brand new email so you can start a brand new account. And when you do that, they'll walk you through and say, what do you want to do? You want more reach? You want to get conversions? You want to get people calling you on the phone? <laughs> you want, uh, you know, like whatever it is. And then they give you right. all the options. It's that simple. They've made it, it very, it, very simple. It, it is that simple. Um but we as human beings like to talk about what's the simplest and how to do it. And then we're oftentimes are afraid to go in there and take a look unless we got somebody who's with us with a flashlight. What, what, what is, tell me your experience with getting shit done and why you think that every person nowadays thinks that they need like a mentor or somebody to like show them how to do everything. Um, I, I'm not trying to ca throw stones at anybody or criticize, but there is a very different approach to entrepreneurship. And I'd like you to, I'd like to know your perspective, Edison, as a, as a, as a 25 year vet who's been, you know, who's been, who's done well, who's, who's had hardships um, but who's had to pick yourself up in, in, in literally, if you don't make money, my brother, uh, your family has not ate. How many, how do you approach learning new things? And for example, if somebody wanted to run paid ads, th do they need to reach out to you? Have you fly out to their house, sit next, do they need to hire you for one-on-one -on -one coaching? And, and that's, that's fine. They right. could, we know that this is a, you can, it's a capitalistic world. And that's fine. Go hire Edison for coaching for paid ads. I'm not saying don't do that, but can well, well, you, you here, know what I'm getting at? Yeah, here. yeah. You know See, what I'm here, getting at. I think that the word that comes to mind when you ask this question is really accountability. Okay. <sighs> Talk about one it. thing that I've realized with Legendary because I'm constantly going into your portal, by the way, because I still learn stuff from what you guys are doing because you guys are just rocking it. So accountability. Well, I'm comes learning in. today. That's what that's what that's what successful people do is we we go anywhere we can to learn some stuff. And yeah. so thanks for learning from me, but thanks for coming here because I'm learning from you. Continue. Uh, but accountability uh, works in two different ways. Okay, if I log in to Legendary and I see that you are doing something that has to do with you know like the blueprints. Okay, I love that program. I mean, it's, if someone doesn't have it, they need to invest in it. But you take people step by step there. 
You could either tell someone, listen, I'm going to do this thing. And if I don't do it, I'm going to look like a total fool, right? And then just follow the steps in there. Or you can hire someone that tells you, hey, you haven't done this. You haven't done that. You say you were going to say do this. Uh, you're wasting your time on that because that's what a lot of people do. They start doing the keeping your hands busy thing, right? And it's like, oh, but I read this book and I saw that video and I did that. But what have you done today to make a buck? Every single day, you have to do something uh, that gets you closer to your financial goals as possible, right? And we're talking about finances right now. We're not talking about health or anything else, right? But if you want to get closer to your Money, financial goals. Money, moolah, greenbacks, exactly. you're, not, you're, not happiness, not all that, but just money. Right. Exactly. And you're either going towards something or away from something, right? So yeah. if you have your goals, right? And you're accountable to yourself that if I'm going to make $100,000 this year, right? And what am I doing today, right now, this moment? Is it taking me closer to that $100,000 or is it taking me away from the $100,000? Is reading this book here that has nothing to do with anything that I want to do getting me closer? Maybe it is because maybe you want to read something to, you know, like to, to just zone out and then, you know, like disconnect from the world. That's perfectly fine. You but need if you're to do that. But, but likely if you're coming through legendary and you've read rich dad, poor dad, you, you don't need no more books. You, know, exactly. you need to put the oh books down. Yes, absolutely. You're so right. The book reading and the YouTube inspiration video watching, you know, the I'm not talking about one here in the morning to get you going. I mean, we got a lot of people on our team that, that watch a lot of inspiration to get fired up. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the endless. Oh, I've, I'm, I'm, how's your business going? Well, I'm waiting on a book to arrive from Amazon. Yeah. Wait, I asked how your business, how, what, right. how many sales you make today? Right. Wait, what? Amazon, I got a book coming. I'm waiting to get started because I wanted to get into this book and really read, you know, what, what, what he thinks. No, we're living that instant gratification world. Dave. <laughs> we can go like, on no. YouTube and no. It's like YouTube is great and it's bad at the same time because YouTube, you go to a, a, any video, how to make money, right? But they tell you do X, Y, Z, but they leave out a couple of things that maybe, uh, you know, you didn't. You should have known about well, because right? books are a great loss leader to their course. Yeah, I mean, I mean, folks, listen, wake up and let's really look at this from creators, not consumers. Right. Authors are starving, struggling and broke for the most part. So what they started to do is smarten up and the all the business all the marketing books anybody who's got half a, a morsel of marketing dna in their body has picked up on the fact that books you can't get rich selling a book you you can't make money selling a book it's simply a loss leader and it's simply a way to position a person as an expert these days that's it it's not a money maker unless you're the Dwayne, the rock Johnson, and you're going to sell 20 million the first day. He's probably made a few, but you and I are not going to even great authors who sell a lot of books. Don't make money. Like musicians don't make money on their music. They make it on shows. They make it on deals. They make it on other things. So we have to understand that even if we're going and we're reading books and getting trained up and all this, that they're, that's likely the loss leader, the front end, that's their 15 day challenge. And for, for, for legendary, what I tell people a lot is, look, we got a 15 day challenge for seven bucks and then we got the blueprints and that's it. I mean, there, there might be a few other one-off programs somewhere. We got marketers club, but we got two flagship things. There's not going to be endless upsells. You're not going to be spending 30, 40, 50. Nobody's going to come to you and say, buy $5,000 worth of coaching from a legend. We're just not going to do it. We're just not going to do it because we know that, that, that at the end of the day, um, you can either get results or you can have excuses. And you can read endless books and, and, and be constantly taken into other people's sales funnels uh, and buy their programs and enroll in their things and be a lifelong student, or you can get results. 
And I am actually thinking, Edison, of stripping down more and more of our education and more and more, because I think the problem nowadays is not that there's not enough. It's just that there's too much information mm -hmm. and we overcomplicate things. We, 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 we forgot about as people, as a people, how to figure shit out. And the, you know, so what we need to do is we need to tell people and we need to get people back in that sort of mode of, look, I, I, I have of realizing that if somebody does it for you, it's, it's a disservice to you. The best scenario is that you, you learn how to do it and you go out there and you do it and you fail or have a challenge. And then you come back and we reassess, we watch the tape or whatever, which we can do on blueprints, coaching calls and, and all these kind of things. Um, but you're actually going out there and you're taking action. Papa Don said a couple of weeks ago on our wake up legendary, if I'm not filming video, if I'm not speaking somewhere or writing, this is two human beings, two other people, then it's likely just busy work that's not really going to bring in any money. And as a real true 25 year vet, even this every moment that we sit here on this show is time out of something that we could be doing with our business. How do you protect, how do you value your time, and how do you ensure that you don't waste it on bullshit or people that don't deserve it. Well, one of the things that I teach uh, my students, because uh, I also, you know, uh, teach online and offline and everything else. But one of the things I teach is to have a, a uh, weekly calendar. And in the weekly calendar, uh, some people can't stick to this, but I show them how they can. And this is what you do. You say, okay, first of all, what's my blueprint? What is it that I'm trying to accomplish? Right? What are the, one, two, three, five things I need to do every single day that if I do these things, I could go out and do anything else I want. But if mm -hmm. I accomplish these five things or three things or 10, whatever it is, it could take five minutes. It could take five hours. But if you accomplish those things, the rest of the day is yours. What are those things? And then I say, okay, put it on a weekly calendar and just say, okay, Monday, I'm going to blog. Uh, uh, Monday, I'm going to research. Uh, uh, Tuesday, I'm going to blog. Wednesday, I'm going to uh, video, uh, Friday, whatever it is. But every day, you have to have some type of activity that you're doing that's getting you closer to what the financial goal is, whatever that amount is. And then you have to monitor it. You have to look to see if what you're doing is working or is not working. But if you write it down, okay, that's the thing. You, you know what a brain dump is. You take everything here, you throw it on a piece of paper, you hang it up. I have a whiteboard right here that tells me everything I need to do because I have so many projects and so many things. I say, oh, I got to do this by this date. But if you just put a calendar, a whiteboard, a piece of paper, I mean, like I have on my wall here, I have something that is like, this is due this day. But get it from here on somewhere else and then just say, all I need to do is this tasks. And it's, it's very important that uh, something you just said, which is let's see if we can get from all of this information to something more concise, right? That's the key. And that's a good way to look at things because what I love about uh, everything that's in Legendary is that you have a lot of different things so I can go anywhere. But if you have, let's say, an area that says, hey, uh, are you a beginner, uh, uh, medium or, or advanced? And then in there, and, and then you say, okay, if you're advanced, these are the ad strategies you, you should start implementing right away. And then just concentrate specifically on that. If you're medium, just starting out, you don't even know what the internet's all about. This is what you're, you know, this is what you're going to do. I think yeah. you, you may want to do that. Like Netflix, for instance, just started uh, doing, uh, if you want to watch a 30 minute show, a uh, 60 minute show, a 90 minute show, and now they're breaking it down by how much time you have on your hands, you know? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you need to watch, a lot of people say, don't waste your time on Netflix, watching football and all that stuff, but you need some downtime. You need yeah. downtime, you know, you need your, your brain to process stuff. So yes, you still need that. So it doesn't mean you're not going to do the things you want to do. You're in business for yourself because you want to do the things you want to do. The minute that you don't have the time to do it, why are you doing all this? Why are you, you know, like going out there and getting all these things done? You know, yeah. it's just you have to live the lifestyle you want to live. And yeah. that's 
bottom line accountability to yourself or, or to someone else okay some people it works better if you're accountable to yourself some people a lot better if you're accountable to someone else okay some people blast yeah. something on facebook well, i'm gonna do all these great things right but then they don't do anything and then they feel terrible right tell a couple of people don't tell the world and then after you accomplish it say hey this is what i did over the last year <laughs> you know so it's a lot better to to speak from accomplishment than from what you're proposing to do. And and I love this comment that was was shared by Letty. Um, I, I, Letty, are you? Letty said, "I bought the blueprints almost a month ago and have not put it into action. Ridiculous on my part. Need to get through the trauma of information and learn it instead of being scared of it." Um, Hey man, I I uh, I really relate to that. And here's what I would here's what I would recommend to anybody who's feeling like the information overload is hurting you. Um, unsubscribe from all the things that you don't want. Um, when you when you go on to Facebook, if you if you if you want to keep Facebook in your life, we're on Facebook right now. Every time you go on to Facebook, unfollow people stop taking in stuff you don't want it, it it when i realized that that i could unsubscribe from all the noise the emails that i hadn't opened in a long time why am i still subscribed to this person because i like them no it's not good enough not not a good enough reason why do i still follow this person on facebook why am i still on this platform why do I still why do I still have this app on my phone? Why do I still take calls from this family member? I mean, when we start protecting our eyes and ears, our life changes. And all this extra time and all this extra energy that we have suddenly opens up. How do I know? How can I speak so? Dave, you're speaking so like you're you're pontificating as if you think your way is the best. I I, I do think this way is the best. I do think that really taking control of your time and setting clear boundaries and letting others know that you're not, you're a serious person, that you're, you're like cutting people off, not taking their calls, letting it go to message, closing your door at home and putting a sign and saying, family, don't come in. I mean, truly protecting your time and protecting um, y your, your precious brain space, because if you cleared all this stuff that you don't want, that you're constantly taking in, that's taking up valuable brain space and energy each day, you'll, you'll have more space and energy for these few things that you want to do our training that you want to go through and then implement. And it's a wonderful thing, my friends. If you have to get extreme, get extreme. If you have to get, you know, if you have to delete every single app off to your off of your smartphone, except, I mean, if you have to delete Facebook off your phone, I mean, come on, get radical, get extreme about your own life. And this is what I'm I'm yelling from the rooftops every day to people. And it's 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 but it's not just here. I was talking to a family member in town last night who runs a program for multiple universities. It's it's their legitimate college programs. It's just that colleges actually hire outside companies to come in and teach, I, I, which is which is which is really interesting. So her company comes in and teaches these programs, and she was explaining that the same exact attitudes uh, are present in university. It's not just here. So we as a people, we as a people. It's not just internet marketers. We are not dummies. There is not anything wrong or broken about us. All human beings struggle with the same things, whether they're in college or whether they're over here trying to learn as an entrepreneur. And the solution to it is what I'm talking about. It is cutting out distractions, getting clear with how much your time is worth, and setting boundaries so you have more time and space and energy to be able to actually go through trauma or excuse me, go through the training in the information and not feel traumatized by information overload. What say you, Edison? No, absolutely. A hundred percent. 
you have to concentrate on yourself. You have to concentrate on the things that, you, that are going to get you to where you need to go. Only you need to know, uh, only you know where you want to go. And the distractions are just that, distractions. Uh, uh, I use uh, Gmail, right? The same way you do. And one of the things that they have that I love on the top, it says, you haven't opened this person's email in a while. Would you like to unsubscribe? Yes, I do. <laughs> so they're all making my life even easier now. Yeah. But if every so often I purge, I go in there Absolutely. and I go and see what haven't I opened in a while? What doesn't yeah. interest me anymore? And I just delete, 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 and then just completely unsubscribe to those. Absolutely. So Absolutely. If you're you not have looking at our stuff, unsubscribe from our stuff. Not sure why you would, but if you're not <laughs> looking at it, then unsubscribe from it. I don't. It's not going to hurt my feelings. There's 8 billion people in the world. If one or two of you or 20 of you or a thousand of you unsubscribe today and we're like, yeah, you're right. I'm done with this guy. Guess what? Cool. Good for you because you cut out something that you're not focused on and now you can be more clear. Just don't put something else in that place. But right. Gosh, Absolutely. this and I look at your space too. Your space looks clean. Even is this office in your home that you're sitting in? This actually, we just sold my home. I had the whole uh, after the divorce, we had to sell do you everything. Live, do, you, do you live where you're this where you're staying? Yeah, okay. yeah this is okay. my place. Right here's now. here's here's my point. I see a clean work environment too. I okay. see if if you have an office in your in your house, one of the first assignments we give to blueprint business owners is clear your space, clean out your wallet. Why? Because I can't. You know, all these things matter. My workspace, how many distractions are there? How do I keep my space? How do I keep my desktop? How do I keep my email inbox? If I allow clutter everywhere I look, mm -hmm. I am also going to be overwhelmed. So it really is an act of purging. I love that word, purging, of shedding extra layers of skin that you don't need so you can focus on the things that you deserve to be focused on, not that other people want you to be focused on. And, and one thing you'll notice here, I'm only, I only have the things out that, that I want to focus on myself. Just like you said, I have my family here in the pictures. I have bookshelves here, but, so I can just grab one of them and refer back to it or something to that effect. I have my, my, uh, again, the bar right behind me because shot Friday, right? Uh, I mean, Hello. I have, just the things that I want in front of me. My desk is nice and neat. Sometimes it's a mess because it gets a little overwhelming, but then you get back to it and you say, okay, I got to stop. I got to put everything away. I got to purge, like you said, and now let's let's get going again. Because we all falter one, one way or another. We falter. We, we stop yes. doing what we're supposed to be doing. We start doing other things. Like you said, I got rid of all these emails. I unsubscribed, but now I subscribe to twice as many. Don't do that. Okay. And if you do catch yourself, all right, mm -hmm. you should have like a monthly checkup or a quarterly checkup, right? You change your oil in your car every three months or every whatever number of miles, right? Depending on the oil you, you, you put in, right? Why don't you do the same thing for your brain? Okay, give it an oil change every three months. See what's going on, what's working, what's not working. If you have your goals written out and you, they're clear and they're there, all right, first of all, don't change your mind on them all the time because some people create a goal and they, oh, oh, no, I want this one now. I want this one now. And you're constantly changing it. Try to stick with something every yeah. three months, every month or every two or three months check to see if you're on your way to that goal. If you that. forgot about that goal and you've moved on to five others since then, exactly. that's a great, that's a great point. I mean, writing things down, if you're somebody who is constantly switching gears now, I, I actually do write things down as well. Um, I, I actually use even a simpler system. Um, <laughs> so it's weird, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I put them right there. I put them right there. Here's another one. I put them right there. I've actually got five up. I use Trello. We do use Trello as well. And we use Slack. I have some, but I tell you what, the real simple stuff. And I love that because I, I get to see what I wrote. If you're somebody who's d easily distracted, then absolutely write down what you're going to do and be focused on over the next six months. 12 months. And then you can look back at that every day and see, 
hey, am I still doing that? Hey, am I still on that track? I, I, I love that. And, and, you know, I'm not a big write journaling person, but I am willing to do whatever it takes to change something. And so if I was in a position where I, 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 I was constantly switching, I would absolutely, um, I would absolutely do any and all of these things. So I, I want to challenge even those of you who think that some of these things are silly, writing stuff down, hanging it on your wall, using, I would just challenge you to be uncomfortable and realize that your absolute best thinking got you here and that other ideas are good. You know, and that's a humbling thought. It's like my absolute best thinking got me in the situation in life that I am right now. Okay, let me become, let me, let me open up, be a little bit more humble and be open to some new ideas and, and, and not just, which is another thing that I see a lot of students do just constantly seek out new saviors and gurus until maybe I find the one who treats me the way I want to be treated and tells me what I want to, what I want to be told. And um, or teaches me the way that I think I should be taught. And um, what I would challenge you to do, and this is what I have to do every morning. Somebody at the recent event asked me, Dave, what's your what's your what's your morning uh, routine? And that's a great popular question in the entrepreneur space. And I said, I wake up every morning. I look up at the sky and I ask the uh, the universe and God to help me not look this up today. And that's my morning routine. Um, that's my morning routine because I get up and I have a crazy brain too. And I do all the same things that everybody else does, but there's nothing that I'm not willing to do to change if that's what is required. And, you know, as we wrap up and, and bring this in for a landing, my final words, and then I'll pass it to Edison for yours. For those of you uh, who are looking to make a real change on this Friday, the 27th of May, 2022, be willing to do whatever it takes to change. Uh, there's a gentleman who's a BPA here, Taylor. He was an affiliate of ours and, and a customer of ours and, and, and marketed. Well, he sold his bed to buy training. Do I recommend that you sell your bed? No, but... Um, he 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 had a friend say hey would you be willing to sell or no he's not just to buy training but to to invest into his business his mother had cancer and he wanted to you know earn money and be with her and help her and um and he sold that bed man he sold that bed and you know when i think about that story that's a guy who is willing to do anything uh to get uncomfortable and to change and None of us have to, to sell our beds, but a little bit of uncomfortability to sit there and, 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 and if we find ourselves on Facebook scrolling to say, you know what, let me, let me disengage from this, this, this trance I'm in right now and let me get back refocused and, or let me spend 10 minutes just unfollowing people because I can even make a new right decision once I've just made a wrong decision. If I somehow land on Facebook and I'm scrolling or TikTok and I'm scrolling, I, I can immediately say, okay, I'm trancing out right now. Let me get back on track and I can, I can get back on track, you know? And so that's my, that's one of the things that I want to leave people with this morning is, is being willing to do whatever it takes to change. And, and Edison, I know from 25 years in this business, divorces, giving all your business to your ex-wife to make sure that she was okay, starting from scratch, building it all up, going through the, what you went through with losing all your clients through the pandemic, continuing to be here, teaching, training. It's just another day at the office for you at this point because you've, because you've been through it and you've seen it's not to say that you don't feel and you're not a human but I, I see a man in front of me who's been through a lot of stuff and understands what it takes to get back up and, 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 and keep going in the pursuit of championships and the pursuit of, of winning for yourself, for your life, for your family. And so um, that's my message for everybody here on this Friday to wrap up. And thanks for being a great example of that for us this morning, Edison. What say you to wrap this up and bring this this plane that's been flying for one hour and 17 minutes in for a landing. Absolutely. Uh, first, thank you for having me on today, Dave. Uh, this has been a, a, one of my pleasures. 
Uh, one thing I, I just need to emphasize to everyone is you definitely need to understand that you are worth everything that is coming to you, right? So if you want a hundred thousand, a million dollars, whatever it is, you're worth it. You got to believe that you're worth it, first of all, okay? Once you believe that you're worth it, uh, I could lose everything and I have lost everything on three different occasions in my life. And I know that I'm worth it and I'm worth it and my kids are worth it and my family's worth it. But mostly me, I'm worth it. And I know I can just get up tomorrow and make more money. Money is just an end to a, to, a, to a means to an end. <laughs> okay. Money is just getting you to the place that you want to get to. I'm all about lifestyle. How do I want to live? I'm in this place here. I love it. It's all I need. I don't need anything else right now. More money is just going to get me more things that I can help more people with. It's going to help in my retirement. It's going to help in all these things. So that's your why. So you have to know your why. You have to know you're worth it. You have to have accountability and you have to have a plan more than anything else. A plan. You know how many people don't have a plan? <laughs> you know how many small business owners don't have a plan? That's why they uh, 80% of them fail in the first five years. Okay. One of the things that I always teach small business owners, have a plan, create a blueprint, create something that you're going to create hold a your business company. plan, which yeah. is, which is what we, 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 we try to work with people on as they come through the challenge is, is exactly. building out that business plan. It's, it's so funny that you, that you say that have a plan. That's exactly what you're teaching people to do <laughs> is exactly what people need to be doing. If they just follow your instructions, they uh, through legendary, that's all someone needs to succeed online. In, uh, well, they have to believe that they can do it, first of all. But then follow the instructions and know that you can do it. That's what I'm going to leave everyone with right now. Yeah, it's so true, man. Just following following instructions. I'm 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 not good at that either. It's why I didn't do well <laughs> at school. But you know, entrepreneurship has allowed me to follow a few instructions, go out there, screw it up a little bit. You know, kind of have my fun. And, um, and come back and, and, and not, you know, I don't get kicked out of school. I don't get, you know, I don't get an F I just, I get to keep, you know, come back and do it again tomorrow here in business. And, and that's what I love about this. So thanks for the, the, the great conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody go and follow and connect with Edison on, on Facebook there. And, um, and we'll talk to you later, brother, come back here for another, uh, follow up. Okay. If you, if you, uh, <clears throat> if you, if you have time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on, Dave. Talk to All right, Dennis, and keep up the good work, brother. Same here. All right, my friends, there it is. Happy Friday. Uh, we went way over today. Thanks for those of you who are still on. Um, yeah, really good stuff. And uh, get out of here. Have a fantastic Friday. Um, do something really, uh, do something really powerful for yourself and your business today. And yes. Uh, declutter your brain mindset is everything it, it really is it really is jimmy uh you all have a great day a great night a great weekend we'll see you back here on monday for another episode of wake up legendary peace